Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imager channel. Tonight I'm going to show you the processing workflow that I used on a Deep Sky object known as SH2-297. Now uh, most won't recognize the designation of this object, but when I show, show you where the object's at, uh, you're going to recognize it. So this is the Siegel Nebula, and this is a shot that I took uh, about two years ago, right? January of 2022. Uh, SH2-297 is this bright object here at the edge of one of the Siegel's wings. So I was thinking that this would be a really cool target. This is a lot of dust in here, and I wanted to point one of my longer focal length scopes at this. Now, what I ended up using was my AT115 EDT, so a focal length of uh, 644 millimeters, which really isn't long. We're, we're still in wide field territory as far as I'm concerned. But uh, this shot here is about 330 millimeter focal length. So it's about uh, double the focal length. And actually, it's the same camera. This, this shot was with the uh, StellarView SV70T and the ASI 1600 Mono, that camera now resides on my AT115 EDT. And so we'll take a closer look at this. The field of view got most of this wing. It got right about here. So definitely a closer look at this uh, region here. Alrighty, so let's pull up. This is the luminance. Now, uh, total exposure, I want to say, is 23 hours. I think it's about 16 for the luminance, and uh, the rest evenly distributed pretty much across red, green, and blue. Uh, I did want to get more RGB data, but um, uh, the, the weather didn't cooperate as usual, and now the moon's out, and I am just decided to finish this image and not wait for a, um, another new moon cycle. Now, there's a lot of stars in this one, so uh, it's going to be interesting. You can't really see a whole lot in here. I mean, you know we got something there, but so many stars. Uh, let's take a look at red and green and blue. All right, and so usually with LRGB, uh, my uh, processing workflow is to work on luminance and then work on the RGP separately. And once I get to a point where they've both been stretched and uh, maybe a little bit of curves work, but not a whole lot, mostly just get them both stretched to about the same brightness level, uh, then I blur out or smooth out the um, RGB data and then add the luminance data. So we'll take a look at the luminance first and then I'll briefly go over the uh, RGB. Okay, so first I'm running dynamic background extraction and uh, here you can see the result of dynamic background extraction. Uh, let's do a comparison. Again, it's hard to see because of the amount of stars in here. Uh, but uh, trust me, there was a gradient. In fact, we could probably see it here. Um, yeah, so my, pro my uh, method for um, doing dynamic background extraction, especially in environments with a lot of stars like this, is I'll first make a copy of the luminance, I'll remove the stars, and then I'll run dynamic background extraction against the starless version just to kind of get an idea of where the reference point should be. Uh, I do save that process and then I apply the DBE process to the starred image and that's what we get over here. Next I run um, Blur Exterminator against this and um, there, that's what it looks like. So. Blur Exterminator, as usual, doing a fantastic job, especially with these stars. These really rich star fields, you really need something like uh, Blur Exterminator or a uh, good run of deconvolution uh, to tame those stars. Uh, let's see how Blur Exterminator handled the corners. This, uh, I do have like some tilt in this uh, 
in this um, imaging train, one of the corner, corners in particular is pretty bad. Actually, these are not great. <laughs> I don't think my spacing is, is perfect either. And this did a pretty nice job. Yeah, I guess it's not that bad. I guess this corner was the worst one. Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, this corner is pretty bad. All right, so after that, I remove the stars from the luminance. I do not keep, no, I did keep them. They're right here, but I generally don't use, uh, use the luminance stars unless um, I'm specifically wanting to boost the uh, star count up. Uh, but anyway, uh, so this is Blur Exterminator Stars Removed. Not processed yet, not stretched. And here's where we stretch. So I'm using the um, Generalized Hyperbolic Stretch. Is that what it's called? Uh, yeah, Generalized Hyperbolic Stretch. And taking it real slow. The, the goal here is to not... Uh, overdo it, which is very hard because this this core of this uh, nebula is extremely bright. I figure as long as I'm not clipping the data, I mean this star in the center I can't help, but as long as I'm not clip, clipping the data out here, I should be able to uh, pull it back a little bit. Alright, you see I got a mask in place. And yeah, so trying to do some work on there. See, I with the mask in place, I pulled back on curves, and yeah, we can still see some structure in there. Now, I think what happened here is that I felt like it was too dark, and so I put some brightness back in there, All right? Because this is really, really bright, so we don't want to. We don't want to take it all all the way out because then I think it, it defeats the purpose. <laughs> I mean, all this stuff around here is illuminated because of how bright it is. So we just want to dial the brightness back so that we can see some of the structure in there without de-emphasizing it too much. And just more curves work. I think this time, yeah, now I'm protecting this so I can brighten the other area up without impacting it. Okay, and uh, after this, it's stretched now. It's pretty much ready to go. I did apply noise reduction using noise exterminator. And so there, we can see. Now it's nice and clean. And I'll zoom in. So before, after. So yeah, I think this did a pretty, pretty good job. All right, next up was working the colors. So I just used the LRGB combination tool to put them together. Uh, and then I ran dynamic background extraction against them and I ended up with this. Uh, next would be using blur exterminator, but the correct only function, I think. Let's see. Oh, I didn't want, I didn't, uh, <laughs> didn't reset this one. Let me get it reset. Okay. So what you want to do with Blur Exterminator after running dynamic background extraction, and this is also how I handle my one-shot colored uh, data, is I use Blur Exterminator the correct only function. So you see it, it corrects the star shapes. It basically, I think it's helping to align the RGB values uh, better on the stars without doing any other work against this. And just to show you really quick in Blur Exterminator, oops. Right, so it's this option here, correct only. Notice when you hit this correct only, all the other options gray out. So all it's doing is correcting the stars. So the idea is to do the correct only first. So hit, do dynamic background extraction first on your color images. Then with Blur Exterminator, use the correct only option. Then you do your color uh, correction or color calibration. Uh, what I used was the uh, the SPC, SPCC, uh, whatever they call it, yeah, Spectrophotometric Color Calibration, SPCC. 
So you got to do an image solve on the image first, and then you run this. Uh, this background, this little uh, reference point is the background reference in uh, right here, region of interest. So that just gives it a, a point for background. And then you apply the color calibration. Now this looks strange, but uh, that's only because we're using a um, a unlinked auto stretch. In fact, show you what the color calibration does. So this is what it looks like linked uh, auto stretch without color calibration. So the colors are off. Uh, and actually, this is um, this is with dynamic background extraction, right? Uh, if we don't have Here's the image before dynamic background extraction. You know, look at all the, the gradient in here. Uh, and if we hit that, <laughs> it's green. So dynamic background extraction actually takes care of a lot of the issues. Uh, you end up with this, and then when you apply uh, the uh, color calibration, that's what we get. So this is actually looks pretty close to the um, unlinked auto stretch. But of course, now you can stretch this image manually and, and you don't have to worry about using a screen transfer function. I find that the auto stretch uh, overdoes it on RGB or broadband data, but it works pretty well on narrow band. All right, so after color calibration, I run Blur Exterminator this time, uh, the full effect of Blur Exterminator and there. So uh, doing a great job with the stars de-emphasize them nicely and uh, not that it matters too much on the color side I mean the detail is not really that important since we're gonna blur this out anyway but uh, the main the main goal of running blur exterminator on the color data is to get the stars nice and tight alright so next up on the color was to remove the stars and save them of course uh, this is what it looks like starless now, after I removed the stars, I felt like there was still a gradient in there, right? You can see some green up here in particular. So I ran dynamic background extraction against this uh, image again and ended up with this. Uh, let's see. And then after that, it, need, it was time to start stretching the RGB data. So that's what's going on here. Basically use the same method. Uh, now you can see a mask in there because this was the core here was blowing out pretty quick. There we go. All right, and next was to smooth the RGB data out. So that's what's going on here. Um, I used noise exterminator uh, with no sharpening and maxed out the denoise. Yeah, so I thought that looked pretty good. Alrighty, so next time to uh, add the luminance. And this is what it looks like with the luminance data added. Um, let's see. Actually, you can see. Alright, so yeah, let's back up all the way. So RGB data, that's what the luminance added. And then I started doing some curves work. All right, uh, let's see. All right, um, yeah, a little bit more work on this. You can see I did some more adjusting in in the, the emission nebula itself. Yeah, and this is just curves work, really, just pulling back on curves. And then I did a quick uh, integration with the stars. So this is the first combined image, and this is just to kind of give me an idea of where things are headed and identify any kind of problems that I'm running into. Let me move stuff around here. So now the thing is, with removing stars and then processing them separately and then adding them back in where they're tighter, they're de-emphasized, they're smaller, it does add to it does create some issues because if you look at the starless image we've got some blotches in here 
these in particular, one right there, there's one over here. This one's quite noticeable. There's one right here in the center. These blotches are left over from, uh, these are artifacts from the star removal process. So these are spots where there are really bright stars. And, um, you know, the, the star removal program, whether you're using StarNet or Star Exterminator, it's making a calculation on what the sky should look like behind the star. And it's, it's because of the stars are being bright, it's getting information from too close to the star, I think, and it's creating these these blotches. So when you add the stars back in, the now smaller stars, basically it's almost kind of like a halo. It's not a halo though, it's just it's just uh, an artifact because the star is so so much smaller than it used to be. Yeah, these are really noticeable here. And I mean, you know, at first glance, this may not stand out too much, but it it kind of bothered me a little bit. It makes the whole image look kind of hazy or soft. Uh, let's see. So I had to go back and do more work. Uh, here's, this is what's noise exterminator applied to it. Still got those blotches under there. Let's see. This one, adjusting the brightness. See, I thought it was too bright. <laughs> it darkened it up a little bit. You know what this is? This was me thinking maybe I could lessen the effect of these blotches by darkening, darkening the whole image. But I decided not to go that route. You know, at this stage, I actually took a break. I think I combined these into another image. Might have been this one here. And yeah, yeah, because we can still see those brighter areas here. And uh, I took a break. I did my little 24-hour uh, cool-down period. It was more like 10 or 12 hours. Uh, and then I came back. And I think this is the one where I started. Yes. So I decided to address these blotches. Oh, actually, before I decided to address uh, the blotches, this is a reflection area. So this should be a lot bluer. Somehow in my processing, I lost the color here. And the same over here. I mean, there should be more blue than gray. So you see, I made a mask. Uh, I use the um, the color mod script. This one right here. This one does really well. In fact, this might be the, the settings that I use to create the mask that I have applied. All right, so I'll leave the mask hidden and there, a little bit bluer. A little bit bluer again. Okay, now I have, you see I got a reference point here. I'm wanting to deal with uh, this, this artifact in here, this blemish. And so, let's see. Yep, so I got a mask. We'll zoom in a little bit. And I just used curves. I pulled back, uh, I think I pulled back on blue and saturation a little bit there so very subtle right but it, it's definitely noticeable especially when you zoomed up and I think I gave it a second hit yeah so it's not it didn't remove it a hundred percent but it blended it in with the background a lot better right so now same kind of deal uh, these masks I'm just using a game mask and same deal, just pulling back with curves. And now you see a preview box down here. Uh, yep, and decide to risk it and tackle two at the same time. And again, just pulling back on curves a little bit. So, I mean, if you look really hard, you can still see it in there, but it's, it's de-emphasized enough that it should look better when I add the stars. And yeah, I wanted to do some work here. This was too bright and too soft. Um, let's see. Yep. I may have hit these little areas with uh, not just pulling back on curves, but also hit them with um, a 
little bit of unsharp mask. And, and same deal here, right? This is tricky because we've got that same kind of artifact here. But how do you deal with that without damaging some of the structure in here? So it was just a real uh, light touch with curves. I think I pulled back on the blue. Oh, actually, here you can see that's unsharp mask right there. See the difference? It's really noticeable over here. Uh, I tried, maybe someone can answer this. I tried using, yeah, HDR multi-scale transform. And when I made the changes within the preview box, it worked really well. But then when I got out of the preview box, it, it looked, it smoothed it over. It wasn't giving me the same result. And I think it's a consequence of, uh, of how this tool works against a preview box versus accounting for all the information in the entire image. Uh, the problem, though, is I thought a mask would, would prevent that from messing it up. Uh, and that seemed to be how I thought it worked in the past, but it just wasn't working in this image. All right, so anyway, um, unsharp mask, and then there. I pulled back on blue, right? So it actually helped kind of improve the structure in there by taking that blue out. And what else? Oh, a little bit more work in there. Ended up with this. All right, and now I messed around with the stars, trying to get a good balance of how the stars would look. Uh, not this one. Uh, so I produced this here and this one here. Oops, not that one. This one here. So these were two different images. Uh, see, this one's a little bit darker. But the problem that I was running into now uh, was, again, if we go back to the starless image, there's a lot of structure here. And it's being concealed by the stars. Right, it's very noticeable. I, I really like the way this starless image looks. But when we add the stars, it's just, we're losing too much. This one's a little bit better. So I decided to address this after fiddling with the stars to crank up uh, the brightness. And I still have mixed feelings about about this. Uh, the image I shared on the community tab um, on my YouTube channel is the darker image. I think this looks pretty decent, but it's still kind of hazy here and, you know, we're obviously blown out here a little bit. And so I did some more work. I took the image into Photoshop and ended up with this. Let's kill that preview box. If I'm honest, I still feel like it's a little bit too uh, bright and maybe a little too blotchy. But I don't. I think the blotchiness is just uh, it's just this information back here. So maybe I just don't have enough uh, data resolved. I mean, this is this is really starting to get into like some dark nebula up against this emission nebula with all this dust, and my Bortle Five backyard is probably not. Uh, not helping. <laughs> and uh, here's some irony. I uh, did upload this to my Instagram account. You know, is Instagram crops the images. And I actually really liked the way the crop looked in Instagram. So I came back and I did crop it. So I don't normally crop the images, but I think this crop helped because it, I ended up just cutting off some of this empty, not well resolved area anyway, and I moved the the uh, focus on this object to the left a little bit better. So I think it frames up better in this cropping here. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. I mean, what do you, the, the main question I have, the main opinion that I would like to get from everyone is which do you like better, this bright version or one of these darker 
darker renditions. Yeah, I think this one here. Yeah. Which do you like better? Contrast is definitely better on the right. I think I like the color more on the right, but you you're just not seeing all that dust. Uh, and the left does a better job of showing it. Well, I guess it's pick your poison. <laughs> All right, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Uh, do check out the affiliate links that I have in the description. If you use any of my affiliate links, uh, I do get a small commission, which helps the channel out a lot. And uh, if you're also looking for a way to support this channel, uh, there is a join button and you can join membership. Uh, the cheapest option I think I have on there is 99 cents a month. So every little bit helps. And with that said, uh, clear skies everyone and pleasant evening. Goodbye.